Hey guys. Okay, hey, that too had to go away before I could start. So, <clears throat> what we're going to be doing is we're going to be starting Unit 2. We finished Unit 1 officially last nine weeks. And last week you took the beginning of year assessments that the CKLA uh, suggests you do after the, the first unit. So today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing an introduction to Unit 2. And Unit 2 is going to be on Early American Civilizations. And the title itself, and I need to go to this presentation mode. I didn't even think about it. <coughs> Sorry about the lag. I'm at school right now. Okay. So, I'm sorry again. Okay, so basically we're going to be studying the early civilizations of America, and the civilizations we're going to be talking about are the Maya, the Aztec, and Inca civilizations. And we're going to be starting with lesson one. Okay, the key components of this lesson, and it's supposed to be around 45 minutes, but I will keep it less than 45 minutes because in reality, the program I'm using won't let me go over 35 minutes when I record. So the objective for this lesson today is for students, uh, you're going to describe key components of civilization and identify present day regions in the Americas as they're located in the locations of three ancient civilizations. So basically what today you're going to be doing is you're going to be learning the key components of what a civilization is. There's a few components. And then you're going to be able to identify the regions in which we are talking about when we talk about the Maya, the Aztecs, and the Incas. Okay, so we're beginning the unit called Early American Civilizations. Based on the title, and the image that is slowly pulling up over here. What do you think, and you should know the title, we just went over it, we're going to be going over ancient civilizations in areas of the lower half of North America and in South America. We're going to be learning about the Mayas, Incas, and Aztecs. Now, as we go, we're going to be learning about ancient cultures. Now, for this reason, and you've been studying these for a very long time, timelines. Some historians use labels to divide history into general time periods so that it's easier to understand and study when we talk about history. Although it is difficult to identify the specific end date of ancient time and beginning of the date of modern time, it's a little difficult. A lot of people argue where it began and where it ended. Ancient times generally refer to events that occurred a very long time ago. And modern times generally refer to what is more recent. And you also have something that's called prehistoric times. And those times refer to times that are before written history came about. Now, when we refer to a timeline... I do not know what's going on with this PowerPoint. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay, here we go. I, once again, I apologize. I do not know what's going on right here. Okay, parts of a timeline that we're going to start going on is BCE. BCE stands for Before Common Era. Now, this is what happened very, very, very long time ago. Uh, your parents may be more familiar with the abbreviation BC. When I went to school, we learned that it was either BC or AD. Now we refer to it as BCE and CE. B.C. stood for before Christ. So you have B.C.E., which is common, before Common Era. And with B.C.E., you're actually counting backwards. And you'll see that when we get to our example of a timeline. 
When you have CE, which is common error, that refers to the more recent years, including this current year. Now, CE, they count like normal. One, two, three, four. Like this year is 2020. Next year is 2021. Now, the arrow on the left side of the timeline, when we get there, indicates events that happened before dates noted on the timeline. The arrow to the right happened prior, or wait, what would it be? Uh, time points, our future indicates dates and events that have not yet happened. So let's move this back down. All right. Now, what we're going to be looking at is a timeline. Now, discuss the features. Okay, we're going to discuss the features and we're going to label them. If you were in the classroom right now, we would actually, you would have this in front of you and we would be labeling it. But we don't have that option right now. So, look at the labels. What do you see and what do you notice about the timeline? Well, one of the first things I notice is that this right here is blocked off and it indicates ancient times. So anywhere from, now just remember, these go like the 3500 BCE, you have, there's more if you went that way. It would be like 4000, 4500, and 5000. That's how it goes. But as you can see, it counts backwards. You have 3500, 3000, 2500, 2000, 1500, 1500. And this right here is where the before common error ended. So, this is one part. And then we have modern times. Modern times, see, this is where some people get, like, where it started. Began around 1500 CE till today, 2020. Now, I have a little blank spot. If you remember what you studied last year, that little blank spot is referred to the Middle Ages. And the Middle Ages was a time in which you had a lot, uh, it was post-Roman Empire. We had a lot of different things going on, battles, just religion was becoming very popular when Christianity got started. So that's in that time period. Something else you see down here, you have the labels BCE, and then you have the label CE. So this is your timeline. This is what we refer to as a horizontal timeline. It, it, it's always reminded me of a number line. Now, there are multiple types of timelines, and as you get older, you will be able to see all those timelines. Now, you don't have this in your packet. At least I couldn't find it. So, what exactly is components that make up a civilization? To be a civilization, you have to have six things. Okay? You have to have these six things to be considered a civilization. Number one, there has to be some sort of farming, agriculture, and cities. There has to be. People settled in early civilizations. People settled in the fertile valley regions or river valley areas, and they began to farm. They called it the fertile river valley because the land, the soil was able to grow a lot of things. Once people began to um, be able to cultivate seeds and they realized, hey, I can take this seed and plant it and it'll regrow. Once the nomadic people discovered that, they started making civilizations. They started building cities. So soon after they began farming, people realized there was food and the population grew. As the population grew, small communities started to grow and those communities turned into cities. You had to have some sort of a religion. Religious beliefs and ceremonies reflected the complex relationship between nature, human, and gods. Now, a lot of ancient civilizations had what we know or what is known as polytheistic religion. Now, a polytheistic religion is a religion that believes in multiple gods. That is why, when you see right here, this gods is under is lowercase. When you when you have an uppercase God, you're referring to the, the God that Christians worship, Jesus Christ. Now, so you had to have religious beliefs. You had to have some type of either deities or something that you worship to. That's one part. 
you have to have social classes and we're going to learn about social classes during this time. But if you refer back to your fourth grade years, when you talked about the middle ages, there were, uh, there were social classes. You had your serfs, you had your merchants, and then you had your knights and nobles, and then you had your kings. So social classes are not something that has just, you know, many people say, oh, that's not true. It, it is. There were so social classes, and a social class are groups of people that fulfill different roles or jobs in society and had differing social statuses. And unfortunately, if you were born into a social status, it was very difficult, if not impossible, to get out of that social status. Uh, civilization, you have to have art and, and agri um, I can't talk, art and architecture. Often lasting for long periods of time, art and structures conveyed the beliefs and values of societies. Art, how they drew, ancient Egyptians, they had their hieroglyphs, as you saw with the cover of our uh, unit, the Mayans were very colorful. They had that kind of art. You also have um, the architecture, which is building. You have the ancient Egyptians that, uh, I'm going back to them because they're really, people know more about them. You have the the pyramids that they created. You have the Roman Colosseums. You have, this is a way that it showed the culture's not only worth, but kind of social status in a way. Also civilization, you have to have some sort of government. Government is uh, the organization, it's developed to oversee the needs of the business of society. They include different kinds of laws and styles of leadership. System of recording information. You have to have a record of something. For civilizations to survive and to thrive, we have to have some sort of records. And these records were used for accounting and to convey information. Writing systems became more complex. Instead of just drawing little figurines or stickmen, you began to learn about different writing styles in ancient languages. So these are the six components of a civilization. Farming in cities, religion, social class, art and architecture, government, and a system for recording information. Now I'm going to give you a little bit of advice. You may want to pause right now and you may want to look over these six components and I will put it on Google Classroom just this picture so you can look these over because I'm going to trust that you're not going to use it when I give you a pop quiz on the different components of what a civilization is. You have six components, okay? And you have to be able to match the component to its technical definition, okay? It's going to be real simple, all right? Now, the next thing we're going to look at is what exactly is a civilization based on and what's the definition? Well, Merriam-Webster defines civilization as a noun. And if you look right here, this is how it's, this is the syllables, civilization, and this is how it's pronounced. That's the phonemic pronunciation. Now, here's the definition. There are one, two, three, four, five official definitions. You have 1A, a relatively high level of cultural and technological uh, uh, development, specifically the stage of cultural development in which writing and the keeping of written records. You have B, the culture characteristics of a particular time and place. Number two is the process of becoming civil, civilized. Um, you know, you're not doing crazy things. Number three, refinement of thought, manners, and taste. And 3B, you have a situation of urban comfort. Those are the definitions that Merriam-Webster believes to what civilization is. But what would you, as a fifth grade student, believe civilization is? To me, civilization is just where groups of people are able to live as one, uh, and, and they have a system of government schools and they want the best for their community that's what a civilization is to me but it may be different for you now here are some ancient civilizations we're going to look at five of them 
And most of these you're going to be learning later on in your, uh, your education, probably around sixth grade or so. And I honestly loved teaching about ancient civilizations when I taught sixth grade. Okay, so if you were in the classroom, you would be given some civilization cards. And since you're not in the classroom, I have put them on the slides. Okay, the first one we're going to talk about is ancient Mesopotamia. Ancient uh, Mesopotamia is located in the Middle East. It's kind of in an area that is in between Africa and the continent of Asia. It's in that area right there. Now, it was, cre okay, it established around 3500 BCE to 500 BCE. So it lasted about 3000 years. It was developed in the Middle East on the Asian continent. It, it was farmland, there was farmlands. They called it the Fertile Crescent. Now, it, the land is in between the Tigris and Euphrates. The Tigris is on top. The Euphrates was on the bottom. So ancient Mesopotamia was like right there in the middle. It was the cradle of civilizations, kind of like where it started. They had a writing that was called cuneiform, and they would write on papyrus, which was papers made out of reeds and stuff. And they had a code of law called the Code of Hammurabi. Now, Hammurabi was serious about following the rules. This is where you get an eye for an eye and hand for a hand because he literally thought if you stole something from somebody, then you get your hand chopped off. So his rules are very interesting when you get to study them. And then you have the ancient city of Babylon was in Mesopotamia. Okay, we have the ancient civilization of China. It began in 3500 BCE, and it lasted all the way to CE, which was 220 uh, CE. So that lasted almost 4,000 years. So uh, you have, it was developed on the Asian continent, and it was along the Yellow and Yangtze River. The Yangtze Valley was called the Rice Bowl because it's known for growing rice. They have a great um, climate for growing rice. Rice is very, something that I honestly still cannot understand how it grows. Now, they invented paper, and they also have a system of writing using characters. Now, like I said, you have, they use different things like over in Mesopotamia, but they didn't, it's not actually, it, the papyrus was more so of a bunch of reeds. The Chinese actually created paper. And they have a series of symbols, which some still use today in their writing. Okay, next is ancient Egypt, and I love studying ancient Egypt. Now, that's from 3100 BCE all the way over to 332 BCE. So that didn't last as long as most, around 2,900 years. Now, it developed in the northern part, the northeast. When you look at Africa, the continent of Africa, Egypt is on the top rim of it. It's in the northeast section. Now, it was farmed. It had very fertile land along the Nile River. The Nile River ran north to south. And, or not north to south, but up, it ran from the northern, okay, it ran from upper Egypt to lower Egypt into deltas. You had the Valley of the Kings, the Valley of the Kings with pyramids and tombs of pharaohs, which people still are learning from today. Their writing was called hieroglyphics, which was very 2D. And King Tut or King Tutankhamun is to some a very important pharaoh. He was a very young pharaoh who came to power at a very young age but he also died at a very young age. Okay, so we have two more civilizations left. We have ancient Greece. Now, ancient Greece was about 3000 BCE to about 146 BCE. And Greece is a group of islands located off of Italy, south of Europe. So it developed in the Mesopotamian Sea, like I told you. They worshiped many gods also. They were polytheistic. You have the god, uh, the Zeus. This is where all the Zeus, Hercules, and all the, Hercules was a demigod. But you have all of these that came into place. The Parthenon is a great example of architectural advance. And it was created to honor the god Athena. And you can actually go to a complete replica, two size, of the Parthenon in Nashville. And you can go in, and I don't know right now with the corona stuff, but you can go there. The first Olympic Games were held in honor of the god Zeus. Greece was also known as the birthplace of democracy because the citizens had, number one, the right to vote. 
they had the right to be part of a jury and to make decisions. The bad thing was when we have a jury here, it's a jury usually of 12, but their juries could be anywhere from a dozen people to hundreds of people. They had the right to serve in assembly of men who debated and created laws. And these debates could go on for days. And they had the right to choose people who represented them from each area, similar to how we have the choice and who represents us. So that was ancient Greece. And then finally, we have ancient Rome. Rome is one of the most interesting civilizations that you'll get to know. Now, it's about 1200 BCE to 476 CE. That's when the Roman Empire fell. Now, the empire ruled from a city in Europe, I'm sorry, a city of Rome in what is now Italy. That's the country that looks like a boot. It's in the southern portion of the continent of Europe. Latin language, roots, suffixes, prefixes form the base of a lot, many English words that we use today and scientific words. Government included the Senate. They had checks and balances, just like we do, and they also had veto power. Julius Caesar was an important leader during this time who was killed by a group of men in his the Senate area for power, basically. You also have, during this time, Mark Antony who was very popular. Now, they built structures such as large stadiums, aqueducts, bridges, roads, and amphitheaters. Now, this is an example of how, I gotta stand up. Okay, this is an example of how ancient times, how they set. Now, we did ancient Mesopotamia first. So this is about the length of time it create, it was started. Ancient Egypt, I'm sorry, China, Egypt, Greece, and Rome. Now, a lot of these time periods overlap with each other. And that's something that is really interesting when it comes to ancient times. Now, I'm having to look at the book. Notice that all of these civilizations overlap in terms of when they existed. This means that they existed at the same time, but in different places. The five early civilizations developed in different places around the world. We are going to study three ancient civilizations that developed mostly in Central and South America, as well as parts of Northern, (laughs) excuse me, North America and what is now Mexico. Okay, so what we're going to be doing here, I'm sorry, I had to make sure I was on the wrong thing. Okay, so this is a flat map of the world. Now, I'm going to go here, and I'm going to get the yellow. All right, now, this area over in here, okay, this is the Pacific Ocean. Okay, I'm just going to use the letters, okay? We have over here the Atlantic. So, the United States, North America, and South America on either side have either the Pacific Ocean or the Atlantic Ocean. All right, now, this is North America, so we have N-A. Please don't laugh at my drawing. And South America. So this is when we refer to as the Americas, this is what we're talking about. Now, we are going to be studying and looking at the people in generally what is known as Mexico, right here and then different parts of South America. Right here, and then areas right in, we're gonna talk about areas right in here. So, that is what we're gonna be discussing in this time, and this is what you need to know. You need to know that the Pacific is on the west, the Atlantic is on the uh, east, and usually, right here, and this is what affects a lot of our weather, it's the Gulf of Mexico. It's a gulf. It has, a lo- it has the Atlantic waters go in it, but it's, a, it's referred to as a gulf because it's not like an open water system. And this is where a lot of people from our area, when they talk about going to the ocean, this is where they go. So this is a map. I'll see if it's going to let me erase here. Hey, there it goes. So, and we're just going to continue going, so I don't need to erase that. All right, so, not 
going? Oh, I do need to erase this. I'm sorry. Okay, in your packet, you have an early civilization timeline. Now, this timeline is different from the previous timeline because it's going up and down. So that means it's called a vertical timeline. And you can see that because it's going up and down compared to what the other one did, which went this way. Okay, the earliest events occur at the top. Okay, these are the earlier events. And the more recent events occur at the bottom. Now, the zigzags just below the arrows, like right here, the zigzags, indicate the amount of time of time too long to show on just this timeline. For thousands of years before, not from 12,000 BCE to 5,000 BCE, people were known as hunter-gatherers, like right up here, your ziggly line, because it's kind of, they're kind of compressing a lot into one little thing. Now, here's what we're going to do. You need your pencil, okay? I want you to write modern times in the box at the bottom. Boop. Write modern times. Now, before you say, Miss Moore, I don't know how to spell it. Look up here at the top, and it says modern times. Okay? You got this. All right, now, here's the next thing you're going to do. Find zero. Find zero. How do we label the time period before zero? So from this time period over here, how would you label that? What would you say? You would say that this is your B, C, E. So what you can do, you can take your pencil I'm going to go blue here, and you can or write B, C, E. All right, now, what about after this? Okay, we would, and it's right here, C, E, so all of this is C, E. When on the timeline do you think the ancient civilizations of the Maya existed? Now look at the timeline. When do you think the Maya existed? Okay. Now what about the Aztecs and the Incas? Okay, there's the Incas, there's the Aztecs. Okay. Now, lesson wrap-up. It shouldn't take very long, and I know this kind of went longer than probably anticipated. What is the region of the world we will be studying in early civilizations? What region? Remember, it is part of North America, the Mexico part of North America, and then right below in northern South America. What are the name of the three civilizations we're going to be talking about? Name the three. That's right, the Maya, Inca, and the Aztecs. Now, what are some components? Get this eraser. What are some of the components of a civilization that we learned about? Remember, some of the components, they had to have a government. They had to have art and architecture. They had to have, I just went blank on what they needed. They needed farming, and they needed a system of government. I think I already said that. But all of those six things that they needed were part of creating this government. Now, I'm sorry, that was my dad. Okay, so all of these components create a civilization. You need to know six components better than what I just did. What are the three civilizations that we're going to be talking about? And what are the regions? Now, this was your introduction. When we Next lesson, we're going to be reading chapter one and doing some activities with it. And I have to get out of this.
because I took the box away and hopefully 